In this video, we will be taking a look at the oil analysis kit on AMSOIL's website by logging on to AMSOIL.com. In the search field at the top, we can type in kit01, and that will bring up our search results. The very top one here is AMSOIL Oil Analyzers Test Kit Postage Prepaid. If I click on this, it will bring up my kit that I can add to my cart and check out. If you take a look at the picture, the actual package has slightly changed. This is an old picture, um, but this is the kit that you want to order. When you receive your oil analysis kit, it will include a mailer envelope a self-adhesive mailer label, a sample information form that you need to fill out about your sample, instructions for the oil analysis sample form, and your sample container. The first thing that we need to do is take the sample. For this procedure, I will be using my oil replacement hose, my oil analysis pump and of course my oil analysis kit. I'm also going to be using a little bit of masking tape and something to cut my replacement tubing with. The first thing I'm going to do is pop the hood. Next I'm going to locate the engine oil dipstick and remove that. I'm going to use the dipstick to measure a length of tubing that is about one foot longer than the dipstick and then cut it to that length. Next I'm going to place my tubing back up against the dipstick and I'm going to mark the top of the dipstick with a piece of masking tape. This is going to give me a visual indication of how far I need to stick the tubing down into the engine. Next, I'm going to install the tubing into the back of the oil analysis pump and have a little bit of the tubing stick out the other end and clamp that down. You can give the tubing a little tug to make sure that it's not going to pull out. We can then open up our oil analysis kit and look for our sample container. I'm then going to remove the lid off of the sample container and install it onto our pump. After that, I'm going to reinstall the dipstick into the engine. By allowing the engine to run for a few minutes, we're mixing up the oil inside of the engine. Now that my engine has ran for a few minutes, I'm going to remove the dipstick again. And where the dipstick came out, I'm going to insert the tubing for our oil analysis pump right down about to the tape line so that the end of the tubing is basically sitting where the end of the dipstick would sit. Next I'm going to give my oil analysis pump a few pumps. By analyzing a sample of used engine oil you can determine the wear rate and overall service condition of an engine along with spotting potential problems and imminent failure before it happens. This particular procedure has become a critical tool in certain industries where downtime due to engine failure can be costly and potentially dangerous. After that we're going to remove our sample collection container from the pump and cap it and we've taken our sample. With the oil analysis pump, you'll want to clean that really well. We can reuse that in the future, but with the tubing, you'll want to make sure you properly dispose of that 
because if we were to use that same tubing on a different vehicle, we would get a contaminated oil sample because we have oil from a previous vehicle left in the tube. And don't forget to replace the dipstick. Next, we need to fill out the form. The first part of the sample information form that you need to fill out is located under sample information and it's actually the customer information which includes your name, your company if you are doing this for a company, address, city state zip, phone number, email address, and also if you want to receive the copy of your report via email, fax, or postal mail. The next section to fill out is the component ID and secondary ID. Component ID is whatever you call the vehicle or whatever will help you remember or distinguish this particular vehicle. In this case, this is Stacy's car. The secondary ID is where you give a little more specific information about the year, make, and model of the particular vehicle. The new lube sample section is used only if you're going to submit a new unused baseline sample of oil. Most likely you will probably not be checking this box. The lube time will indicate the distance or hours on the sample that you've taken. I know that in this vehicle I change the oil once a year. Last year when I changed the oil I wrote down the mileage. This year I also wrote down the mileage and the difference was 9200 miles. That means that there is 9200 miles on this oil that is in this car at this time. The component time indicates the total distance or hours on the vehicle. The odometer on this particular vehicle is at 58,000 miles. The lube added section is to be checked if you have ever topped off your oil at any time before you had taken the sample. I have not done that in this vehicle, so I'm not going to check that box. In the last section of this first part, we need to identify if the lubricant was changed or if the filter was changed after you'd taken the sample. On this particular vehicle, I do the oil analysis and despite what the oil analysis results show, I still change the oil and the filter once a year as recommended by AMSOIL. So I'm checking yes for both of these boxes to identify that after I've taken the sample, I've went ahead and changed the oil and the filter. If this is the first time you're doing the oil analysis on a vehicle, you'll want to move down to the component registration section of the oil analysis sample form. The engine in this vehicle runs on gasoline, so I've checked the gasoline box. The next section wants you to identify the engine manufacturer and engine model. Now most people know that their vehicle might be a Ford or Hyundai. I know that my vehicle is a Hyundai, but to find the engine model, we're going to log on to amsoil.com. In the area that says I need products for, I'm going to select car or truck, because I have a car. The year of my car is 2008. The make is a Hyundai. The model is an Elantra. And the engine size is what we're looking for, 2.0L for liter four-cylinder engine. The next section wants us to identify the application. This particular vehicle is for automotive purposes, so I checked that box. Then we get to the last section, which asks for the lubricant manufacturer, product code, grade, filter, sump capacity, and that's some information that you might not know off the top of your head. So we're going to jump back over here to amsoil.com, taking a look at the same area we were looking at before where we typed in our vehicle and 
after selecting the engine size, I'm going to go ahead and click search. Now what comes up is a list of lots of information about your vehicle, but what you're looking for is Amsoil is the lubricant manufacturer. The product code for this particular vehicle is Signature Series and you can also add this ALM. Well, for my vehicle, it's ALM. Your vehicle might have a different product code. The grade is 5W20, and that is SAE. If we then scroll down, we have some additional information. The oil filter is here, but it only asks for a full flow bypass kidney loop you will most likely have a full flow filter and the sump capacity if we take a look under capacities for engine is 4.2 quarts with the filter so we can take that back over to our sample form and fill that in on the bottom now that we have completed the sample information form we can remove the barcode from the form and apply it to our sample jar. Next we're going to fold the sample information form and insert it into the clear plastic pouch. After that you can place the sample jar into the main plastic bag. Then we're going to fold back the flap and peel away the release liner to expose the adhesive and then lay the flat back over and press down to seal the envelope and the last thing we need to do is apply our mailing label and send it to the post office mm -hmm.